Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Rupp, and today what I want to go over is how to use our clearance point. Now, you might have seen in some of my other videos where I'm addressing how to use G54 and G55 and the differences between them, and how that distance between each other, I allow myself to take off material off the front side and the back side. However, in this video, we're going to talk about this clearance point, okay? Very important on how my can cycles work, especially for OD can cycles. It could be for a G75 can cycle, G72, G71, all these different can cycles. We're gonna address this OD can cycle clearance point, okay? So, if you look right here in the video, my tool comes from home to a clearance point right there. This is what we're going to address, this clearance point. So, if we look at our board right here, you'll see that we have kind of a, a generic uh, visual of how this can cycle works. In one of my videos, I kind of showed you how each one works. But this point right here, this letter C, that's what we want, we want to address today, is how to use that C appropriately, and we want to know how to use it to our benefit, all right? so. First thing I want to do is I want to load a program that shows me going to this position. So, if I come over here to my screen, I'm going to pull up my simulator, and I'm going to hit cycle start. Now, if you look right here, it goes pretty fast. We'll slow it down here in just a second. This is everything that's happening on my first side. I'm just going to face it, and then I'm going to turn it. So let's slow this down and see what else we're missing right here. So I'm gonna hit reset. We're gonna start over. I'm gonna turn on this single block right here. So I'm gonna hit cycle start. And if you look up there, my material is two inches in diameter. My material is four and a half inches long and it's round stock. Now it says four and a half inches round. That can be a bit confusing, okay? I can reword that if necessary, but my material is two inches by four and a half inches long, all right? The next thing I got on there is how much I'm chucking on to, but right there, Z0 is minus 100 thousandths into our material from the face of it, okay? So if you're setting all your tools off the face of your part, or if you're using a tool eye and you're shifting in the G54 or G55 work offset, the distance from the tool eye to the face of the part, we're going to go an additional 100 thousandths. Now, the rule that I teach is your clearance point needs to be 100 thousandths larger than your diameter. So two inches would be two inches 100 thousandths. And I want you to move 100 thousandths in front of the part. We don't want to cut a lot of air. Okay, so on the lathe, you usually go through it pretty fast anyway. So we're going to look at that in our program and see what we get. So I've got single block on. We're going to keep going right through here. Okay. And we're going to keep going down. My machine is at the home location. I've got an optional stop. I'm using a turning tool. So I got my tool coming on. It's doing its thing. So right here, I'm going to hit cycle start one more time. And it's going to move in rapid to that work offset 100 thousandths above my diameter and 100 thousandths in front of my diameter where I or my face where I set Z zero. All right. So right here is my clearance point. And obviously I'm not doing very much, so I'll take single block off because I need to draw this part. So I'm taking a little bit off the diameter. I'm taking my material off the face. This is 100 thousandths I'm taking off, okay? Because the face of my part is gonna be right here, okay? That's where I set all of my tools off of. My Z0 is right there. Okay, a hundred thousandths in from the face. Now that was accomplished by moving my work offset in an additional one hundred thousandths after I set my Z zero. All right, so that's behind us. Now we need to know what happens if we need to take more off the face. What happens if I shift a hundred thousandths into it? Well, my tool is no longer a hundred thousandths in front of my part. Okay my tool is actually right there at the face of the material. Now you won't notice very much of that 
because you'll just be cutting off some of the face of the solid edge. But what happens if I move in 200 thousandths from the face of my part? Well, we're gonna go ahead and draw our Z zero line on there. I'm gonna make it look a little bit more clear. So this right here is the face of our part. That's where that tool is gonna to be right now. Now remember, that is 100 thousandths in front of where the part finishes. So I'll go ahead and draw another line for where this part finished just a second ago. So we're gonna go into our offsets and we're going to move an additional 100 thousandths, which will equal 200 thousandths from the face of our material. Okay, so let's come over here. We'll go into our offsets. And we're gonna go into our G54 and we're gonna go minus 100 thousandths into our offsets. And we'll come right back and we'll just hit reset and we'll run it. So it's gonna come in, but now look at that. We are really far. So the face of our part is the red line. But if you look at my tool, where my tool was at, it was way inside the material so I am technically I am crashing into the material because I'm rapiding past the red line which is the face of my material and I don't have any feed lines taking off the material that I'm in front of that's not good we don't want to do that okay however there is a very easy fix I am simply going to position my clearance point further out okay so a second ago we were still flush. Our 100 thousandths in front of the part that we were supposed to be at, it turned into flush with the face of the material after we shifted 100 thousandths. So this is gonna make a little bit more sense right here. Let's go ahead and draw us a line real fast so we can see where the new zero is at. So this is our shift right here. Okay, that's pretty close where we were at. We'll call it close enough. Now, we're gonna go into our program, we're gonna hit edit, and we're gonna come up to where we were at that clearance point. Now, all I have to do is put Z.3 alter. Now what that did was that moved 300 thousandths in front of where X and Z0 is. So now, when I run this program let's hit reset you'll see that my tool will start in front of the red line which is my material and it moves to the purple line which is two hundred thousandths in from the face of my material but you can tell my feed lines will be cutting into my part now that's cool because this is why my part is four and a half inches long on the raw material i'm going to finish at four inches three hundred thousandths okay now if i take off two hundred thousandths on the front side i have nothing left to clean up on the back side so i wouldn't go the full two hundred thousandths in this example i would go a hundred and seventy five thousandths that would leave me 25 thousandths of cleanup on the back side, okay? So, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and show you that. Now the question is, how do I use the clearance plane to save me money, right? Because that's what we want to do. So, just like in Z, I can do the same thing in X. So if your local material sales has a, a vendor that they cut material for, and let's say they cut the material to two and a quarter by four and a half, right? And they were supposed to cut two and three quarters, whatever the instance may be, okay? But my material, my program is only made to cut two inch diameter, right? All I'm gonna do is change one variable in my X and then everything else stays exactly the same. So instead of cutting with two inch diameter, I'm gonna cut with two and a quarter. So let's change that and let's see what we gotta do. But before we do that, let's draw us a line that represents our finished diameter. So this is where that line was previously, okay? That's my finished stock. That's not gonna change, okay? 
But if you'll notice, my starting point, which we'll call our red area, okay, our material, our material is right there. So let's go ahead and intersect these right here. So that's where my material is at. So I've got Z covered. I'm pretty far in front of it. Now I got this material that's way bigger. Let's change it. So let's go hit reset, go back to our program. We'll go up to our clearance plane. Now remember, I'm 100 thousandths above it. Now I have two and a quarter. You could even go two and a half, but let's say I got two and a quarter material, okay, instead of two inches. I would change it to 2.3. I'll simply hit alter. So now I'm a hundred thousandths above my raw material and I'm simply gonna hit cycle start again. Now, if you look where my tool comes in, you'll see that my tool is above the red line in both X and Z, and it finishes the part at the purple. So the purple's fine, I have no problems there, okay? Now again, my little blue line right here, that was that 100,000 shift, okay? So now the purple just shows us going back a little bit further. But if you'll notice, all I did was just adjust my clearance point, my clearance planes to make that work. And if I had two and a half inch material, I would simply move it up just a little bit more. That's all I would do. So remember, this is a flip operation, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and erase what we have and we'll show you what it looks like on the back side. So on the back side, we'll hit cycle start again. And we'll see that it is going to be flush with where we were at previously. So if I wanted to, I would have to adjust my work offsets. Now here's the thing. It's flush with the back side. So I can't go that full 200 thousandths. So you got two things you can do. You can either move back your op one a little bit more, or you can move it back a lot more. It's up to you. Okay. But if you'll notice, I still have to adjust my back side for that bigger material. So I would simply go back into edit. I would find that part of my program, which is my clearance plane. And I would change that to X 2.3 alter. And then after I do that and I run the whole program and we'll speed it up. You'll see I have my facing and turning for the front side, and I have my facing and turning for the back side. So again, just to be clear, kind of wrap this up, my clearance point is up to you guys to be in a safe zone, okay? A clearance point, which is a hundred thousandths bigger than your raw material, and you wanna be a hundred thousandths in front of your material because even if you shift your work offset, you're gonna to have to offset your clearance point the other direction so that you don't crash. So if I come in a hundred thousandths with my work offset, I need to go a positive 100 thousandths with my Z clearance plane, okay? Give this a shot. Remember, you can always type in an MDI where you want that Z position to be at. That way you can check to make sure that your clearance plane is clearing the part. So, might take a couple times for this to sink in. Uh, again, thank you for watching. My name is Aaron Runk. I hope you enjoy.